until the 1920s, everyone thought the universe was essentially static and unchanging in time. Then it was discovered that the universe was expanding. The questions I would like to talk about are, where did we come from? How did the universe come into being? Are we alone in the universe? Is there alien life out there? What is the future of the Hi, welcome to today's news. I'm your host, Terry Strill. This weekend, budding astrobiologists from all over the world have converged on Seattle for this the sixth year of Astrobiology Conference. That's AbgradCon for short. This year, it's been organized by postgraduate researchers who will be speaking to me in a few moments. But first, a few words from the sponsors. Word, word up, word, word. So a big thank you to those guys. Now we're going straight over to our man on the front line, Ort Kuiper, who's with the organisers now. So, how's it going, Ort? Yeah, what's up, Terry? Welcome to AppGrad Con 2009, over here in the western side of the USA, in Seattle, Washington State. It took me about half a day to get here, and another half a day to find my way around this campus. Man, this place is massive. So, what's on the agenda today? Right now, we're just having a fat barbecue, chilling, relaxing, just getting to know each other, really. The fun stuff really starts tomorrow. But in the meantime, let me introduce you to the organizers of this year's AppGradCon. We have Rika Anderson, Michelle Cash, Mark Clare, Nick Cowan, Marcella Ewart, Aaron Goldman, Darcy Snowden, Eva Stoiken, and Sanjay Song. Sanjay Song will be introducing the sessions this weekend. So tell us what it's all about, Sanjay. Well, AppGradCon is a transdisciplinary international conference bringing together graduate students and postdoctoral fellows involved in astrobiology research to come present their results in a setting that is not found in other meetings. This year we had geologists, atmospheric scientists, microbiologists, astronomers, oceanographers, educators and engineers come present their work. These outstanding individuals will be leading astrobiology research in the years to come. Oh, cool, cool. Hang on, bruv. What the heck was that? What? Over there might have been. Oh, oh, that, that's just a raccoon. Just a raccoon? On campus? Yeah, they pop up every now and again. Don't worry, they're pretty safe. Oh, okay, safe, man. You got me worried for a sec there, bruv. Oh, hey, 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 boy. You, you, you want some of this? Oh, 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 oh. Ouch. We'll be back later tonight where we can catch Ort giving us a live summary from the first day of AbgradCon 2009. Until then, this is Terry Steele signing off. Hello and welcome to the first day of the conference, which has been going on all morning. Our own Mr. Kuiper is in attendance, so what's the news, Ort? Yes, yes, Terry, we just gone to lunch after a grueling few hours of talks. Most of them were summaries of poster presentations that were due to have after the lunch break. The name should be scrolling across the screen right now. You can view the posters on Second Life and you can also ask questions directly to the scientists. So get logged on. Sorry people, gotta go. But join us on Second Life and get involved. But in the meantime, here's a little summary of all the talks we've had this morning. Any, 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 anyone who ever dreamed? The presence and hazards from comets But no need to worry cause Nathan Cape's on it The biosphere is pretty darn safe to be honest The next Mary F explored the light spectrum That bounced off the moon into Earth light detectors She analysed the wavelengths for biomarkers Soon exoplanets could be the next targets If you wanna know about tidal distortions Effects on the planets, ask Brian Jackson Who reckons that they could cause a subsurface ocean But even contribute to atmospheric formation To a resolution of the young sun paradox Colin Gold Black put his idea across The atmospheric nitrogen had undergone a loss Back then there was more but now it's held in the rocks A star that's young says the same about its planets If the youngest to date may be known by Chris Crockett But did it migrate or was it born in its orbit? It's what he believes to be very important And that's all for now We'll be back with another summary from Ward Kuiper After our late night movie with Keanu Reeves The day the earth stood still are you a scientist or just really into science and want to get up to speed on astrobiology? 
try the astrobiology part presented to you by Lucas Mix. In it you'll find information about everything you could want to know about the science of astrobiology. Cool mate, give it a go. Welcome back and here's Lord Kuiper with today's summary from you though. Mars on Earth for MDRS We're living on Mars is put to the test With your Horacoon code built a Martian base To work out which approach could turn out the best Now hydrated minerals are what we're discussing Two meters underground on the ExoMars mission The main aim of research done by Claire Cousins Uses the Pan Cam's different instrumentation Ancient Mars must have been a bit tepid For its channel-like features to be caused by a liquid Jacob Hart Mishra proposed what could cause it Nitrogen dioxide provide the light absorbed now damn me fleece in a Colorado boulder He's looking at deposits from Arctic meltwater It freezes on the surface and contains signs of sulfur And this can help inform us if life may be on a roper Speaking of which, let's have a chat with Jeff Bowman Also hoping for organic molecules that are you open As extracellular polymers could be in abundance We should make a near infrared spectroscopic observation That was Lord Kuiper reported from AdgradCon 2009 We'll be back tomorrow with more news and updates from Washington But until then, good night and it's the final day of talks at AbGadCon 2009. Our own old Kuiper has been soaking up the signs, so what have you learned today? Well, I've seen and heard a whole lot of things this morning, Terry. Let me give you a quick rundown of the types of things that they've been researching. Canadian Arctic is a good site, like Mars and Europa endowed with ice. You can also find sulfur and Catherine Wright, who's a geomicrobiologist, right? In the sediments of a cold Arctic fjord, heat loving bacteria have settled as spores. Whether through mud or a fluid transport, this is something Esther Singer has helped to explore. And then Eric Collins showed a micro sensor to check the early oceans and atmosphere. But that was long ago, and though he couldn't be there, he could study microbial max with the hopes to compare. My man Armando came over from Chile Where the Atacama deserts like Mars but less chilly Where islands of biodiversity can exist under the rocks and communities Now Jennifer's got clotted rocks under scrutiny To check the diversity of micro-communities She analysed the maps for genetic comparisons Identifying black, beige, pink and the button So there you go, we covered quite a lot really But there's even more coming up later so stay tuned for that Sorry to interrupt Ward, breaking news just in Residents in Phoenix, Arizona have reported seeing strange unexplainable lights over the mountains last night. Reports are spreading of a possible UFO incident. We'll have more for you later. Have you been caught in an abduction and it wasn't your fault? Don't worry, we got your back. Here at Fermi's Paradox, we specialize in ETs and UFOs. That's right, extraordinary tales and utterly false observations. Next time you wait, confined you've missed a whole week of work. You've lost your memory. Give us a call. We'll get you the justice you deserve. This riveting story just gets stranger. A couple have reported encountering UFOs while driving home from a vacation in Quebec. Mr. and Mrs. Hill's journey was interrupted by what appears to have been a UFO. They are being quizzed by police and local UFO investigators as we speak. But in the meantime, we'll go back to Ward with more talks from the conference. To understand the space of Danit's cookbook Check the oxygen budgets with Amanda Cook Through the Spitzer Space Telescope she's having a look To work out possible pathways the chemicals took Now, Miller and Dewey were the first to look for proof Of the chemicals implied by Darwin's prebiotic soup Now the appetite has passed to Adam Johnson with his tools That can look a little closer at what compounds could have fused In an RNA world, the early protein synthesis requires that Ribozymes act as a catalyst Rebecca Turk and team are want enough to notice It's possible for smaller ribozymes to aid the process then Aaron Goldman got lexicological, combining ontological with phenomenological. So replicator versus metabolism chronicles are synthesized into a single common model. Eva has proposed a new model for life's origins, aiming to make a link between different settings. A rapid convective transport is the agent, triggered by the thermal and the chemical gradients. Local military sources have confirmed that the lights seen over the mountains were in fact their own training craft. Meanwhile, after much investigation into the hill's abduction, experts have released this statement. In regards to the phenomenon of alien abduction and visitation, 
we can find no testable evidence as to the existence of extraterrestrials, especially those we are used to seeing in science fiction tales. Of what the aliens appear to have a rather consistent story. We currently believe that those aliens have their origins in the imaginations rather than out of space. So in summary, if we wanted to find aliens, we need not to go far. They are in our heads and on our screens. Well, Fermi, problem solved. Nice on Terry. But as I was saying, check out this one. I bet see in the area. She goes subsurface right to the interior. She found that only one type of bacteria had oxidized iron and reduced its bacteria. Emily knows and team are studying basalt pillows in their biofilm covering, mainly to see what the microbes are doing, assessing the way they affect the surroundings. Ling Ling Wu asks if microbial reduction affected the iron isotope compositions that are found in marine sedimentary formations formed in the bottom of Precambrian oceans. Billy Brazelton studied lost cities in the bottom of the ocean by hot water chimneys where archaeal bathrooms sort lateral genes. So about 80% of our related species to explore life's prospects of habitability on different worlds where conditions are icy. Steve Vance discusses hydrothermal activity by focusing on long-lived sources of energy. So that's a wrap from AbradCon 2009. A special thanks to Helen Matsos of the Astrobiology Magazine European Edition. Also to Linda Billings at the NASA Astrobiology Institute for showing an interest in the astrobiology rap. And to Mark Brake for showing me so much support in getting me into where I am now. Yes, thank you for listening. I'm Terry Streel. Good night. Was that spiritual factors and miracles shape the universe and everything physical? Now we think chemicals became biological and study evolution, try to learn how that's possible. Like the Fermi paradox, I'd have to agree that if aliens exist, then where could they be? I've heard about Roswell and strange lights over cities, but still up to this day, we haven't found ET. So our search was proposed by Morrison and Kakoni to investigate the signals from an alien.